Hi everybody, I hope you're enjoying Science Night In. My name is Asha, I work as an engineer at Cook Medical, and I also serve on the board of directors at Wonder Lab. I first got involved with Wonder Lab a few years ago when I started volunteering at STEM Sundays. I think STEM Sundays are a great example of what Wonder Lab does so well, which is take a science or engineering concept and make it simple and fun through a hands-on activity. When Wonder Lab closed its doors due to the pandemic in March, STEM Sunday continued online in a virtual format, and I was so impressed and inspired by how the magic of science and engineering continued using simple household materials. So I was inspired by that to do a little at-home science with you tonight. And of course, we're going to focus on the science of sound. So, at its most basic level, sound is a wave. And that wave is governed by one very simple equation. Frequency is equal to velocity divided by wavelength. So frequency is probably the thing we interact with most with sound because it's what we hear. It's the beautiful melody you sing along to. It's what you start manipulating when you're playing an instrument. On the other side of the equation, we have velocity. And this is actually very simple. It is the speed of sound through air. And so that's going to be a constant because, well, we're always hearing sound through air. <laughs> then we're going to divide that velocity by wavelength. Wavelength is where it gets interesting. So imagine a wave, if you will, and wavelength is the distance between the peaks of that wave. Now, let's say you have a big, long wave. You're going to have a large distance between your peaks, so you're going to have a large wavelength value. And when you divide the speed of sound through air, by that large value, you're going to get a low value as your frequency. And then you're going to get a low pitch, a low note that you hear. Now on the opposite side, let's imagine a really short wave. So that is going to have short little distances between peaks. And therefore, you're going to have a small wavelength value. So again, divide velocity of sound through air by a small value. Now you're going to get a large number for your frequency. You're going to get a high frequency which means a high note. Now, I hope that this mathematically makes sense, but don't worry because we're actually going to see it. Let's build a slide whistle and so you can manipulate wavelength on your own and see how it affects frequency. So what I want you to do is dig into the goodie box you got from Wonder Lab and inside there's going to be a brown paper bag that has a couple components in that. And we're gonna look at what those are, starting with a piece of three quarter inch PVC pipe, a three quarter inch wooden dowel rod, a PVC connector piece, a short little wooden dowel piece with some tape at the end, a little foam circle that has double stick tape on one side, and then finally a little piece of wax paper with some tape on it. So to begin building our whistle, start with the PVC pipe. This is going to form the body of our whistle, and at one end you see that there's a channel cut out. And that's where our mouthpiece goes. So take your short little wooden block with the tape and insert it tape end first into where that channel is. And only push it up until the tape. Then take your PVC connector piece and slide it on top. And now let's see if this makes a noise. yours sounds like, but mine sounds a little weak. We could make this sound better. So I'm going to take off the connector and I'm going to take off the wooden dowel and you'll notice this is pretty loose. I can turn it and that means it's not tight enough. This needs to be really tight and form an airtight seal. So to fix that, I'm going to remove this piece, take my piece of wax paper and peel off the tape and wrap this around just, you know, until the tape is gone. There we go. And now this should have a tighter fit. Yes, it is a lot tighter. It's actually hard for me to insert now, and that's perfect. So again, I'm inserting to the depth of the tape. Nice and tight seal, does not rotate around. And then I'm taking my PVC connector piece and sliding it on top. When I do that, I'm making sure that the edge of the PVC connector comes down to just about the edge of where the tape ends. I want those to be at about the same place. All right, so I look like I did that. Let's try it again. Okay, that's
that sounds much better now. So let's turn this normal whistle into a sliding whistle. Take your piece of foam and peel off the double stick tape. And then choose any end of your wooden dowel and stick the foam on. Try to make sure it's nice and centered, just like that. And then this is going to act as our plunger. So go ahead and stick this foam piece through the other end of your whistle. And you should feel that be able to slide nice and smoothly and easily inside. And now we'll test if this works as a slide whistle. Awesome. And now you see we've proven the relationship between wavelength and frequency. When I stick my slide plunger all the way out here, this entire length of the whistle is available for the sound to resonate. And that means I'm setting a longer wavelength. So again, I'm gonna get that low frequency note. If I move the slide whistle up, I'm setting a shorter length, a shorter wavelength, and now I'm gonna get that higher frequency. And now you see how that works. So now you have a fun whistle that you can play around with to see the relationship between frequency and wavelength. This is uh, something you can experiment with at home, see what songs you can make up, uh, maybe even build it in different PVC lengths. So I hope that you have fun with this activity. I hope that you learned a little bit more about the science of sound. And I just want to say thank you so much for your support of Wonder Lab. Have a good rest of your night.